Hey, everybody. Hey, Phil, you there? You're on mute. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> Hi. Hey, um, welcome, everyone. Welcome, Phil, and our guests uh, to the Feeling Smart with Phoebe and Phil. I'm your host for the evening, Phoebe. And I'm Phil, and we're so excited to have you all here for our new show, Celebrating the Nerd and All of Us. Um, but before we get into trivia, we have a couple of housekeeping items to take care of first. Yeah, so this is an interactive experience. Um, you know, we are online and have been for the last year and a half, but who's counting? For everyone watching along on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, if you want to join in on the fun, uh, just go to this website right here, QA.thetrivialist, wherever it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll still be able to chat with us and say hi, ask questions, and so on. So just hop on over to that link. It's QA.thetrivialist dot com to play along with our uh, questions and answers and trivia. Uh, speaking of which, Phil, how does trivia work? Yes. All right. So the way that trivia is going to go down today is that there are going to be four rounds of trivia, each with a specific theme and eight questions in each round. Those questions could be short answer, fill in the blank or multiple choice. Now we have a couple of rules here at Feeling Smart for playing That's trivia. Right. Rule number no. one, cheating sucks. Please don't cheat. Please don't do that. That just takes all the fun out of the game. Um, and it makes Phoebe and I extremely sad. So don't do that. Great, don't Google his answers. Be honest, have fun, test your knowledge. It's called feeling smart, not how fast can you Google. Number two, please make sure you're putting all of your answers into the answer sheet and not the chat box. So you'll see on our website there, Q and A, oh wait, over there, Q and A.thetruest.com. If you go there, enter your team name and join along, you'll be able to put in an answer and then make sure you hit that submit answer button every time for every question, just to make sure you can get those points. We'll say it all uh, multiple times throughout the evening, but just a reminder, put the answers there and please do hit submit. But for tonight, you will not only be competing against each other to see who will take home first place, you will also be competing against our extra special guest. And yes, that is an S at the end because tonight we have two for the price of one here at Feeling Smart and we are so excited about that and we're going to bring them on right now. So our first guest is a blogger and content creator who is featured in Food and Wine Magazine as one of the top 20 black mixologists that you should be following. From the cocktail snob, please welcome Camille. Hello, Camille. Hello. How are you? I am well. I'm excited to be here. We're so excited to have you. We're, we're very excited for uh, the Cocktail Snub to quiz us on food and beverage. And also, we're going to quiz you as well. <laughs> OK, I'm ready. <laughs> yes. But that's not all, folks. There's more. So we'll bring in our second guest. Um, she's half of the duo behind one of Vine Pair's top beers of 2020, the Perfectly Hoppy Pale Ale. Um, I voted today. Please. Uh, and so many others, but please welcome Simone. Hello. Hi y'all, thanks for having me. Glad to have you. Uh, and of course you're representing Nelson and Non Sequitur Beer Project. <laughs> of course, always. Yeah, always. so are, are you two trivia people? Um, <laughs> I like to Sam, and then I don't know any of the answers, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. It can be very like specifically good at certain categories, but I would say generally not. But let's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully you'll do well in our categories for this evening. Um, so as we mentioned at the top of the show, this is a very special food and beverage edition of Feeling Smart with Phoebe and Phil. And I think it's time for us to probably just go ahead and get into our first round of the evening. So I guess it means it's time for us to enter our in-game mode over here. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I'll do the first round and you can do the second. All right, sounds great. Okay, so let's go on to that first round, everybody. Um, again, if you wanna play along, it's qna.thetrivialist.com. Um, round one might make you a little queasy. It's gonna be food made from poop, spit, or vomit. I love that. I love everything about nothing, yeah. nothing, and none of this, actually. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of food. And so we're just gonna go with it because I found a lot of facts and I hope you have fun with this. Okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> Everyone ready? All right, number one, the most expensive coffee in the world is made from Kopi Luwak beans. Name the Southeast Asian cat that poops out the beans and gives it its much sought after taste. We are going in strong with this first question. We are not late tonight. 
I know, I know. I'll, I'll give everyone a few extra seconds. You've heard this fact. It's the cat that poops out beans. What is the name of that cat? The only thing I know about cats is that we call their feet toe beans. Yeah, but these are poop beans. <laughs> <laughs> so correct their funny answers only, people. Clearly someone's going to get the beans out of that cat's butt. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I know it's so good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Answers are in. And let's see what that correct answer is. Have you heard of the civet cat? No. 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 It's really cute. It's striped with gray and maybe some brown. And it, it's just an adorable house looking cat. It's not big. But then it poops beans that are like $26 a pound. So, wow. What? I've actually had this coffee before in mm -hmm. Indonesia. How was it, Camille? Um, I hate coffee and I hated this too. I was like, oh, it's really expensive. I'm going to love it. I hated it. So, well, we will not ask Camille to be the spokesperson for Civit, um, for Kopi Luwak anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to question two. More poop. Panda Dumpy is made from you know, uh, it sold for as much as $200 USD per cup. What color is the tea? So is it red, white, green, black tea? I, I didn't realize it. Well, based off of its source material, I have only one idea in mind. But maybe it's a trick. I don't know. <laughs> With Phoebe, it's always a trick. <laughs> Okay, answers. So, Camille, what do you think this one is? So, I I also think it's a trick. Um, so, I just said green. I don't know. Ooh, I'm not sure. Sure. Not based on any oh. like knowledge. Yeah, it's green. Usually wow. from the bamboo that they eat. Oh, look at that! Cheers, oh, yeah, Camille. <laughs> Cheers, to that, Camille. Yeah, Thanks she's on the board. <laughs> All right, question three. Y'all have trust issues with me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're we're to cheese. Human microbe cheese. It's a thing, and there are 11 types. Ugh. Microbes were not collected from which of the following? Between toes, head dandruff, belly buttons, or cheek swabs. When they made this cheese in the lab, labs, um, where did they not collect them? Off of a human body. This question is disturbing. <laughs> this whole category is disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I feel about cheese. So it's it's just it could be from any of these places. <laughs> Honestly, it's, all of the options to me, I don't feel like are cheese. I would go near. I just don't think it's for me. Okay. Well, Simone, if you had to pick, which is not one of the ones? I picked head dandruff. Head dandruff. You oh. are correct. Oh, okay. All right. Cheers to you, Simone. All right. <laughs> so are we are we gonna be serving <laughs> belly button cheese at the next on the next charcuterie board? Anybody? I I think it's a no for me, dog, to quote it from <laughs> Randy Jackson. <laughs> and do a beer and microbe cheese pairing. Beer and microbe cheese. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> top seller, top seller. <laughs> I'll pass that super hard. All right, question four. <laughs> Un Kunokoro is a Japanese beer made from brewing coffee beans that have been through an elephant's digestive system. You know where I'm getting at. A company uses this method in what other Asian country? So you have to name the Asian country. So it's a Japanese beer, but the beans come from where? I'll start oh. the timer. Hmm. I just, I just want to know. I just want to remind everyone that humans are very resourceful. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> With the way that this is, it's like, oh yeah, these are some things. Mm -mm. Whew, okay, all right. All right, Phil. What are you? Where are you guessing? What Asian country are these beans coming from? Um. Well, okay. So knowing that if they're if they're going through an elephant, honestly, the only other country that I can think of off the top of my head would be Thailand, because I know that there are a lot of 
elephants in Thailand. So I'm gonna go with Thailand, final answer. All right, seems to be where the majority is and that is correct. Oh, good, all right. Answer is Thailand, 50% got that, good job. I knew a question. <laughs> <laughs> you got trivia, okay, next one. This one's a pretty popular one, so let's see. Vanilla flavoring in all your favorite treats and desserts is called castorium. Castorium. It's made from the secretion of what animal's anal glands? Oh, no. Did not oh, know this. No. Oh, that's me off to like. The... No. Is it a beaver, squirrel, cow, or goat? Name that animal's anal glands where you <laughs> attribute your vanilla flavoring. <laughs> No, not name that animal's anal glands. Anything to that, please. Simone is like, we are never putting vanilla flavoring in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. No way. That's, uh, that's a lot. That's a lot there. This is a lot. All right. What are we feeling, people? I mean, I know we get things from goats. So I'm going to go with a goat. I also that's want a goat. Thing. Yeah, I yeah. want goat. That seemed like the safest bet. <laughs> All right. Did any of y'all take um, biology when you were in high school? Yeah. Oh, right, I guess we had to. Well, <laughs> the, the genus of this animal is castor. So that's where it comes from. And it's actually a beaver. Mm. So it's a beaver's butthole that you're tasting when you- I was say, the beaver, the butt juice. <laughs> well, when you say it like that, Phoebe, um, okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Cool. I'm trying to stay appropriate while also grossing you out. All right. Question number six. Oh, I know this one. Ambergris is a rare substance from the stomach and throat of what oceanic creature? It's worth about twenty nine dollars a gram and is used in perfumes, ice cream, and cocktails. Now imagine if you mix that with the vanilla flavoring. Wow. All right. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. That's getting so, worse. So intense in my body. Getting worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I feel like our audience is going to get this one because this this substance is mentioned in a very popular TV show. There's like a whole episode about it. Oh really? Yeah. All right. Let me show the answer, and then you can um tell me about it because I don't know the answer. Oh, sperm whale. Oh. Yes. And I, I remember this because if anyone has ever seen Bob's Burgers, there's a whole episode where the kids find a giant trunk, uh, giant chunk, excuse me, of ambergris and are trying to sell it um, because it is worth so much. And of course, it shenanigans ensues because it's Bob's Burgers. <laughs> Who said Bob's Burgers was never educational? <laughs> clearly, clearly, I learned something from it. So I'm going to keep binge watching it because it's knowledge. knowledge is, and knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> Number seven. Name the European beer that con uh, contains Isinglass, Isinglass, a chemical found in fish bladders. I'll say that again. European beer that contains Isinglass, a chemical found in fish bladders. You know mm. I know nothing about beer. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, really questions this about is a very niche question, so. But if you had to name like one famous European beer, uh oh god. Time for an apple style. Oh. Let's see if anyone got it. Oh, no. I'm really excited. Yeah. Will, you, will you share some of the guesses that people have for this one? Because I'm very yeah. <laughs> um let me show the answer first. So it is Oh, it's Guinness. the name of a beer. Yes, Guinness. Oh. Oh. Um, we had Heineken. We had two Heineken. Heineken and Heineken because Heineken is nasty. Heineken because Heineken is nasty. Uh, we've got Old Duels, which isn't awesome either. Um, and Pishy? I don't think that is one. I think someone just is trying to share their feelings. <laughs> oh, oh, that would be a really clever name because fish. <laughs> because fish. <laughs> All right, and one last question, everyone. Yan Wo is used in soups, medicines, and desserts. The animal that produces it from its own saliva secretions uses this item in the wild for what? So Yan Wo used in foods for humans, but the animal uses it for what? 
and it's made from their saliva. I feel like one of these answers is going is 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 a trap. <laughs> Bees in a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one thousand percent. Yeah. Simone, Camille, what do you feel? I feel birds. birds. Oh, you Simone. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. We are in sync tonight. Yeah. I can hear the best as well. Yeah. It is a bird. Ah. Whoa, okay. That's fun. Yeah, they use it for their beard, uh, beard's nest, their bird's nest. All right, let's see where everyone is right now. We've got 10 teams. Amazing. Um, I am in last place because I did not play. Uh, fair, fair. I had a hard enough time pronouncing some of those. So in third place with three points each, it's Ceiling, Shark, Ceiling Fart and Hungry Boy. <laughs> and in first place with five points each, Nelson and his gang, and we love Phoebe. Thanks, y'all. I love it. Wow, such such loving and supportive audiences that we have here. Such love. <laughs> All right, so before we move into our second round, since we are switching things up a little bit this week, at Feeling Smart, and we have two guests, we're going to take a minute and talk with our first guest. You know her because we introduced her as having one of the top beers of 2020 from Non Sequitur. Let's chat with Simone a little bit. Camille, we'll see you in just a second. Awesome. Hello, Simone. Hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. I'm feeling hyped up on this game. <laughs> yes. Good. I mean, I mean, you're doing it. You're, you're getting these questions yeah. about bodily fluids correct. So. <laughs> That's right. It's probably really? because you spend so much time with Nelson and his own bodily functions. Oh yeah, that's a very, <laughs> like a normal part of life these days. Have but I know, I, I feel like maybe a lot of people know, but a lot of people don't know Nelson and non sequitur. So you wanna give a little elevator pitch? Sure, so um, I'm one half of non sequitur beer project. It is a brewery run by me and my boyfriend Gage and our dog Nelson. So I guess it's the three of us. Um, been around for about a year and a half based in Brooklyn um, and currently in the process of opening up a tap room of our own in Bushwick, uh, which is really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, we've been, as I said, we've been around a year and a half. We've been kind of a nomadic or kind of without a, a set location for making our beer. So we've been contract brewing um, and mostly focused on uh, experimental hoppy beers. So we'd make a lot of IPAs, but doing other things too, like Pilsner's, table beer, um, some sours as well. Um, and yeah, so we're a, a small but mighty team but um, really excited to be putting down roots here in Brooklyn. I'm so excited and so disappointed <laughs> that I left Bushwick. Just <laughs> like, literally <laughs> so close to your old apartment. <laughs> I know, uh, but it's it's been such a wild ride, I'm sure, for y'all. So um, I, when you said that, it made me think of ghost kitchens, but it's like a ghost brewery where you're everywhere but nowhere. Yeah, so, I mean, exactly. So basically, like, we have a facility. We write the recipes. They make the beer on our behalf. Um, but up until now, we've just been all in distribution. So bars, restaurants, um, and also some home delivery. But now we have this opportunity to be open to the public where we can directly interface with people who are coming just to try our beer and, and just come for non sequitur. So we're looking forward to having that home base for sure. Yeah, and I know you've been in the beer or like the beverage industry for a while. Like, how's it been kind of transitioning from like working with clients and all that to like being a client, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I so I've been working in the beer industry since about 2017, um, part time, kind of just like started out as a beer aficionado and kind of worked my way into the industry. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. It's a super fun industry and a, like a great community here, but certainly just, it's a lot of work and, um, especially in that startup mode, kind of getting this off the ground, um, with such a lean team. Um, we're definitely feeling the like kind of small business startup, uh, stressful time, but it's exciting. We just like, we can't wait to really get this thing fully off the ground. And, um, yeah, we're, we're still having a lot of fun doing it. Awesome. Simone, I would love to know, 
where does non sequitur come from? I, as someone who, if someone saw, I admit when I'm wrong, spelled the name incorrectly. <laughs> I, I would love to know the story behind how you all decided um, the non sequitur beer project is what you want it to be. Yeah, so originally Gage wanted to name the brewery Crooked Tooth uh, Beer Company after the dog with the like messed up janky teeth that he has. Um, <laughs> but when we were, you know, coming up with the name, it was we found out there's already a brewery with that name, which you'd be surprised how many names already exist when you're trying to go on that journey. Right. Um, but non sequitur it means unlike anything that came before it or after it so it, it's essentially like something that's very unique and so we essentially took that it's also like a comic strip i don't know if you know that as well um but i was, used to read a lot in this like sunday funnies yeah. um, sequitur is a is a comic strip too but yeah so essentially like transition from that crooked tooth and then kind of took that idea of something truly unique with that name so Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, that bit of context there. And I, I also have to ask, I mean, I know it's it's probably a little embarrassing. Um, we're like, oh, you were on Vine Pairs, one of the top 20 beers. But can you talk to us a little bit about that moment when you all found out that they considered you, and particularly the I Voted Today, one of their favorites of 2020? Yeah, that was huge. We like definitely had a, a freak out moment <laughs> over here. <laughs> Just like a little like scream and celebration. Um, but yeah, we're super honored to be included on that list. That beer was a really successful beer that we did. It was a, a, a charity beer that was specifically for the election. Um, so it came out around the time of the election and there was an initiative put out by another brewery, Tired Hands from Pennsylvania, um, with like, hey, we want to basically ask other breweries to come out with this beer with this name, but you can be creative with it. Just use this particular um, like hop strain. So we we did our own spin on it, and we did our label. I voted today with the little Nelson uh, Frenchie on it, which is kind of what we're known for now. Um, and it was super well received. It came out at literally the perfect time. It was also out like on election day, so people were voting and had their stickers and had the beer and like. It just also like had a really awesome online kind of viral presence that we were excited uh -huh. about because people wanted to like show that they participated in democracy and then also like holding a beer because like we all needed a beer after that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was like the election that didn't end, right? Oh yeah, just never ending. So yeah, it was, we were so, so honored. And that beer was awesome. It was like easy drinking. Also a little bit outside of what we were making already, which was, you know, a little bit stronger, hoppier, hazy beers. So that was, I would say like a lower ABV than what we were typically doing. So um, it was great to get all that recognition uh, for that beer when it came out. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on that again. I think that was such a cool accomplishment and I'm really happy for you all. And I also believe that you have some new beers coming out or that were just released. You want to tell everyone about those? Yeah, so we just had three beers that came out on Monday. So, I mean, so essentially we're always making new beer. Well, something unique about us right now is like, we've only made one beer twice. Like every single beer is a new beer. So we've done like over 50 beers that are all like new every time. So when we come out with a release, that's a brand new beer that you've never had. <laughs> um, so we're constantly innovating and like trying to come up with new kind of combinations and use some cool experimental stuff. Um, so the three newest beers that are out this week, we have uh, an IPA, a New England IPA called It's Your Problem Now. It's Your Problem Now, excuse me, with a bunch of uh, hops from New Zealand, which is this beer that I'm drinking currently. I love the can design. <laughs> yeah, we have an artist that well can't this is not great but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have the same artist that we work with on typically all the cans who's an artist from LA that is a friend of Gage's um so came up with that we came out with a pilsner that's my next beer as we go through the game uh it's a kvike pills which means we were able to make it a lot faster than a regular pilsner um typically a pilsner takes like six weeks plus to lager um, but we have, we're using a specific ingredient that we could do it in like two to three weeks. 
So that's, it's, um, we are now calling it the non sequitur society of logger enthusiasts. Because <laughs> we love logger ourselves, but we mostly make IPAs. So we're going to be doing a series of loggers with this like can art. Um, <laughs> so yeah. And then the third one is a double IPA as well, which is called I'm a wreck right now. So take a look. We definitely have some of the coolest can art out on the shelves. So uh, it's certainly a way to set us apart from all of the competition out there. So yeah. And all of the, all of the cans have a little Frenchie on them. So you, can see, you can see it up there. You can see it down here, here. I have it here. <laughs> we got it all over the place. I love it. The branding I is strong. The toy too, right here. It's got the dog toy. So, yeah. A full immersive brand experience. I love it. And so, before we jump into our next round, Smoke, can you just tell everyone quickly where can they learn a little bit more about non sequitur, or if they would like to purchase them, how they can do that? Sure. So the best and most up to date place would be our Instagram. So it's at non sequitur beer. Um, we're super, we're posting daily stories are popping. We're definitely like keeping <laughs> active on there, but everything that goes from Instagram is going to Facebook too. So you can check us on Facebook. <laughs> Gage is dropping the dog in here. Oh, <laughs> special guest star. <laughs> we got a special guest star. There he is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely Instagram. Um, we actually just stopped doing home delivery as of this week. We were doing home delivery until then. Um, but you can find us in New York City um, at most places that are like craft bottle shops. We're also found now in Florida, Massachusetts, New Jersey, um, a little bit of Oregon, and Pennsylvania, too. So, awesome. yeah. So you can check like a site like Untapped or Beer Menus and search for us, and tip some of those shops will list if we're on tap for them or not. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us a little bit, Simone, and letting us learn about non sequitur. We're going to go ahead and bring Camille back. And that means it's time for us to move into our second round here of the evening. Um, I believe I'm supposed to leave this round. And yeah. it's, it's very on brand after us just talking with you, Simone, because this round is called Beer Me, everyone. Um, so this is going to be all about our one of our favorite beverages, um, beer, except for Camille. We know Camille doesn't like beer, so I won't, I won't subject her to that. You're good. You're good. But if, I have faith in you, though, Camille. I think you're going to rock this round. I, I feel it in my bones. Thank you. So. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm here for you. I'm there for you. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into our first question here of round number two, Beer Me. So question number one is Chicha, a traditional Peruvian corn beer, uses what odd ingredient? Let's go ahead and get that timer running. So once again, that is chicha, a traditional Peruvian corn beer, uses what odd ingredient? I would say that everything you're seeing there as your choices are, are very odd. Um, some more than others, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember, everyone, make sure you get those answers submitted before that timer runs out and you hit that submit button. Um, does anyone have a guess at what they think the answer to this one is? Saliva was too weird. <laughs> that's not like, that's too challenging, saliva. I said bananas. What about you, Camille? Did you say bananas too? I went with oysters because bananas was like safe. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, a little bit of surprise for both of you is that the correct answer was saliva. Oh my God. That's the odd ingredient. Um, our audience, though, 30% of you knew that the answer was saliva. So good job to the teams out there who uh, are familiar with this. How do they have enough saliva to make that consistently? Like, how do they do <laughs> Whose saliva is it? Whose saliva, Who's saliva is it? Is it? <laughs> questions. We've got questions. we got to find out. That's why I don't drink beer. <laughs> Camille is on to something. Camille is on to something. All right, let's move on to question number two. Who is the patron saint of brewing? You're from Texas, you know. <laughs> you said it's impressive if someone knows. No, I said if you're from Texas, you know. Oh, you're, oh, okay. All right. So Tejas, where you at? You should be coming through hard on this one. Tell us who the patron saint of brewing is. Um, I feel like all of these guys I've seen in a Catholic church. So sounds, I don't know if it was a Catholic church. It was a church-like building. All right. <laughs> so 
<laughs> moving on there from that moment, um, Simone, do, I feel like you might have a guess at what the correct answer is. I'm saying St. Arnold, which is also a brewery in Houston. Yes, that is correct. And yeah. our audience knew it as well. It is St. Arnold with the patron saint of brewing. All right, question number three for the round, Beer Me. How many gallons of beer were consumed in 2016? So flashback, y'all, summer 16. Around the world? Radio, um, yeah. Yes. Yes, Phoebe? Yeah. All right, it's globally. How many gallons of beer were consumed? Camille, we're, we're going to put you on the spot with this one because we know you don't drink beer. So I want to know in your mind, how much do people drink beer? Um, all right, everyone, the timer is going, though, and you have 10 seconds on the clock. Once again, another reminder just to hit that submit button. Um, I went with 500 million. Okay. And maybe we're up to 500 billion post-pandemic. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think if we looked at those 2020 numbers, I think we would be a little close to 500 billion because I know what my trash can looked like for most <laughs> 2020 <laughs> exposure. Um, yeah. um, but the correct answer, everyone, was 50 billion. Oh, so 20 of our audience knew 50 billion gallons of beer were consumed in 2016. It was all the hotline blinging going on that made all of us very thirsty. That is my <laughs> guess. All right, moving on to number four. What is the term for the strained results of water steeped with grains that beer is made from? If any of you have been on a brewery tour, this is a test to make sure you paid attention and weren't just waiting for the tasting at the end. It's 50-50, y'all. It is wort or mash. I have faith in all of you out there. I really, really do. Even me? I do, Camille. I do. Okay. I do. Okay. How relaxed. I but I do. <laughs> Nelson is really enjoying this trivia. Nelson is just relaxed. He loves it. I love it. Nelson's <laughs> vibe. He is the vibe right now. It's like kind of dark in here and he's just getting kind of sleepy. Oh, I'm a sleepy <laughs> moment. All right. So our, our timer is up here on question number four. Camille, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm putting you on the spot. I feel like you had a 50-50 chance. What'd you go with? I'm about to embarrass myself, but I said mash. Okay. Um, so the correct mouth? answer was wart. I said wart. <laughs> wart. It was wart. All right, mash is whiskey, but so what? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Cool. Mash is still a beer term, so it's all good. Don't Thank worry. You, come on. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, it, 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 you, you had a shot. That's it. It's fine. It's all right. I will. I won't know the cocktail round, so we're all good. <laughs> there we go. We're all about balance here. Feeling smart, yeah. right? Okay. So, question number five: What tiny animals will take home their drunk friends <laughs> but throw out drunk strangers? I will read that again because this was unreal and I did not recognize it. Uh, what tiny animals will take home their drunk friends but throw out drunk strangers? 15 seconds on the clock, tell us who you think it is. Did not realize um, these animals were getting drunk like that. I've heard of bears getting drunk, but these, these animals I thought <laughs> oh, were- Oh, really I think I messed up. Oh, well. You can still fix it. Oh. Oh, it's out. It's all good. I think I know. All right, what do you, what do you think it is, Simone? Now I think it's bees because they drink. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought B. I put ants, but now I'm thinking it's bees. Okay, well, I think you should be happy you put ants because the correct answer to this question is ants. Yes. So ants are known to help out their drunk friends. And it looks like a good portion of our audience knew that as well with 30% of you hitting ants, but the rest of you were a little split on those other answers. But I will definitely be watching a documentary about that on Animal Planet if I can find it because I need to know more. <laughs> I feel like this is one of those Planet Earth moments that I need um, David Attenborough to walk me through. <laughs> Can you picture like a big ant, or it's like ants with a Z that movie? Yes, like, yes. Yeah, the, the um, the bouncer, like, no, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Just launching ants. Oh out my of god, ant you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, let's keep it moving with our question, our sixth question. Name the American brewery that makes the beer with the highest natural ABV. Hint: 
the beer is Utopia's and it's 28%. All right. So who makes the beer that is out here trying to gag the girls? 28%. That's insane. That's that's too much. <laughs> Simone, what's the highest ABV you all have made at non sequitur? Um, I think like nine oh. or something like that. It, wow. That sounds well, double IPA, but, but no way. 28, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> that's it's a, it's very intense for me. Um and didn't does anyone have a guess at what they think the brewery might be? I said Brooklyn because that feels on brand. <laughs> <laughs> I said stone. Okay. All right. So the correct answer for this one is Sam Adams. Oh, wow. Um, you know, Boston Boston's own Sam Adams. Um we're gonna move on to question seven because that door is too easy to walk through and we do highbrow comedy here. All right, so in 1986, what beer drinking farm animal was elected mayor of a small town in Texas? Oh my God. I love the choices and decisions that Texas makes because I think they're historical moments we should never forget. Texas is a special place. <laughs> It's a special place. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very special place. <laughs> All right, so our timer is officially out. Um, do either of you have a guess at what animal it is? I feel like the choices here are, they range from Bay Pig in the City to, what was that talk, <laughs> show with the talking horse? Mr. Ed. So it could oh. be any of these people. Simone, honorary Texan. I said horse. <laughs> I just was picturing a horse drinking a beer, so. <laughs> I could definitely picture a horse drinking a beer as well, but the correct answer here is a goat. Oh. Um, so a goat was a town, the mayor of a town in Texas, but um, there also was a golden retriever that was a mayor of a town in Wisconsin. So I, I feel like I'll I'll go with the Wisconsin town in this one here. At least he, that dog didn't drink. And our <laughs> final question here for our Beer Me round is, which U.S. city has more breweries per capita as of 2018? Is it Portland, Maine, or is it Portland, Oregon? Which city has more breweries per capita? Um, and I feel like this one is also very on brand, everyone. So, <laughs> all right. So last question of the round, everyone. Do make sure you hit that submit button before the timer runs out. Um, and I feel like this one is something that I hope everyone got right. The correct answer for this one was. Surprisingly, Portland, Maine. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that I was just there. Were you really? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, I, there's also just a lower population there and there's a lot of breweries. So I think through that, <laughs> that's why it won out. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where I'm realizing I feel like a good chunk of our audience got thrown off because I assume uh -huh. it was Portland, Oregon, and all the magic that happens out there in Oregon. But you're right, Simone. It's definitely one of those things where it's probably a small population, but Tons of room. A lot of breweries for not a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's do a quick look at our standings and see how everyone is doing so far. All right, so currently tied for fourth place, each with six points. We have Nelson's mom and we love Phoebe. <laughs> hello, hello, Nelson's mom and Nelson. Hey. <laughs> In third place with seven points, we have Phoebe, who, who is playing along in addition to co-hosting tonight. So where did I come from? <laughs> I don't know. Multitasking queen, I guess. Um, in second place with eight points, we have Hungry Boy. And in first place with 10 points, we have Nelson and his gang holding strong. Nice. Game right. in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> Let's record it first. <laughs> nice. All right, so Phoebe, this brings us to a very exciting part of the night. You want to tell everyone what's about to happen? Yeah, so we are doing our uh, just one mini game for the night, and it's going to be guest versus guest versus host. Um, it'll be Simone, Camille, and Phil, because I have all the answers right in front of me. <laughs> Don't worry, it's nothing gross this time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I got my grossness out of the way. So it's just official U.S. state food. So I'm going to ask you a question about different official state foods that the state has deemed, yes, this is our thing. Um, I, some of them will have, or I think all of them will have a list of states. You have to name the one, the correct one. 
So rather than give you 50 states to just guess, it'd be madness. There's just a list. All right. So if you get it right, your team gets a point. If you get it wrong, I get a point. Great. I love it. Okay. Here we go. Let's go with this first one. So the official state nut is the pecan for all these states except one. Where do we submit the answer? Or we just say it oh, out loud? No, no, you just say it out loud. So um, I said all, all these states have pecans as their state nut except one. California. Yeah, I'm very allergic to these. California. California. <laughs> I say Texas. Bill? I am allergic to this question. <laughs> Jared is breaking out in hives. Um, <laughs> it's Kansas. What? Whoa. For sure, California would have the almond. For some oh, reason, uh, it's the pecan. Uh, it might have changed, but as of what I saw, it is the pecan. Huh. Okay. Love that. Interesting. Love that. All right. You learned something new, right? Okay. <laughs> all right. Next one is the state fruit for all these states except one is the apple, some sort of apple. So which state is it not? Is the apple not the state fruit? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go West Virginia for reasons. I, that's where I was leaning. Minnesota. I'm also gonna another go, good one. I'm gonna go I don't know why. It's like which can it grow in that climate? <laughs> which one did you say, Camille? Illinois. Okay. Sima? I'm going Minnesota. Okay, and it's another point to me. Oh, because it is Delaware. <laughs> oh my gosh, where I'm Bill, from. Bill, Bill, your your Bill. Delaware cards revoked. Um, President Joe Biden would be ashamed. Um, because the state fruit is the strawberry. Wow. No, well, that's my favorite fruit. I'm embarrassed. I'm gonna remove myself from this game. Bye, everyone. It's been. So <laughs> no. <laughs> Get back here, guys. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I will redeem myself. We'll redeem ourselves. Let's keep moving. Well, I don't even know if you eat these. Okay, oh, state okay. mushroom. All of these have state mushrooms except one state. Ooh. Minnesota. I'm going to go with Minnesota as well. Simone? Texas. <laughs> I think I'm going to win this round. Um, <laughs> what? Missouri. No. no, I feel like Missouri is no. the climate for mushrooms. They do Jeez. have mushrooms, but they don't have an official state mushroom. Oh, I see. Mm. I misunderstood the assignments. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. Damn. Well, this one would be a little better. I feel like everyone eats the next one. Uh oh. State muffin. Ooh. Oh. All, of, all of them have state muffins except one. New York. I'm gonna go with Massachusetts. Go with Maine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, one of you got the point. So New York is the apple muffin. That's a thing. Uh, um, Minnesota is the blueberry muffin. And Massachusetts is the corn muffin. Oh, I was hoping I would have yeah, I got another Maine fact correct. <laughs> Main expert. <laughs> One could say you are the, the, the main expert of the state of Maine. <laughs> Maine. Sorry, I'm going to see myself wow. out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay. <laughs> How about the next one? State cookie. There's only three. These two of the three have state cookies, which does not. I'm going to New Mexico. I say mass. I also think New Mexico. So Massachusetts is the chocolate chip cookie. Oh my God. <laughs> and the bizcochito. Have y'all heard of that? Cookie? That's going to be New Mexico. That's New Mexico. Okay. All right. Oh, well, okay. Well, I should have just said Pennsylvania since we all could, someone would have won it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, we need to, we need to be more strategic in this. It's like oh. divide and conquer team. <laughs> Damn. Okay. All right, now I'm going to get very specific. So it's just one state of all of the, well, that was how it was anyway, but not only just state snack, Phil, next question. State snack is the popcorn. Okay. 
which state snack, official snack, it's in the history books, is popcorn? I'm going New York, baby. Arts and entertainment, the hub of the world. Let's go. I'm going to go Illinois. Um, Utah, because I've been wrong. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Okay, well, Utah's snack is jello. Oh my God. <laughs> So they must, Mormons must love Jello shots or something. Um, <laughs> glad no one said Texas. If you had to guess what Texas's snack is, queso, ribs, <laughs> ribs. <laughs> chips and salsa. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, South Carolina is peanuts, and New York is yogurt. Yogurt. Uh, That's hey. okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're like, what sort of health mom paid her way, gooping yeah. to the top to get that to be the state snack yeah. of New York? Right? And I hope it's not Gogurt, but yes, Simone gets that point for yes. Boston, Illinois. Um, our, one of our former coworkers or coworkers for Camille Nils, if you're out there, I know he loves mixing all the different kinds of popcorn, which is a cardinal sin. Um, <laughs> keep the popcorn separated. I like to mix them too. No, the caramel, the sweet and salty. No, don't. Mix Depends up. on my mood, but I, I get it, Phoebe. I get it. No. Well, that always reminds me of him because he's from Illinois. I like a flavor explosion. I just thought about like corn in the Midwest. Yeah. That's well, why I selected that. Fair, um, fair. I will, I will not say anything yet. Uh, the state vegetable is the watermelon. And oh. I just had to put a picture of Harry Styles. Watermelon sugar. Hi. <laughs> so which state's vegetable is the watermelon? If you vegetable? really think about it, it makes sense. I don't know all these are southern states. <laughs> I just... Uh, oh. heavy. Alabama. I'm doing it. Alabama. Arkansas? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> South Carolina. Oh, I feel like that's right. Okay. So I believe this state, sorry, anyone who's from here is 49th in the country for education. It's Oklahoma. Oh, oh really? really? Watermelon? Yes. Oh, Where do they get it from? from? I mean, I guess technically it's a vegetable because the seeds are inside, but like, come on. That's surprising. Okay. All right. I learned something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. I'm, I'm a little disturbed. I don't like it. <laughs> so all these states' vegetables are the the state vegetable is an onion, except one. Which one is it? Okay. The state that doesn't have a state vegetable just doesn't have a state vegetable. Okay. You can't even like use clues like they're like. I'm gonna go Utah. Texas has made a lot of appearances on this uh, list. Texas I, did not have a state vegetable. <laughs> I say Georgia. Okay. Washington. And the silence, the silence from Phoebe. Wait, what did you say, Phil? Oh, I, I say Utah. Oh, okay. Um, I'm winning this round. Mm. <laughs> it's Virginia. Uh, really? Oh, okay. I guess they don't like onions or vegetables for that matter. <laughs> Damn. We've only got two more. Um, the next one is a little odd. Uh, state dessert is not just ice cream. It's not ice cream. It's the ice cream cone. Oh, it's just the cone of the ice cream. Yep. Which state? Hmm. I like, feel like I have to I'm say Maryland. Maryland. South Dakota, that sounds fun. <laughs> that sounds fun. Mm, yeah, so fun. Maine? I don't know. Maine. <laughs> <laughs> no There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just there kidding. there is no rhyme or reason. That's the thing. Um, weird. Except for that I'm winning all of this. So uh it is Missouri again. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone awake in Missouri? What are they doing over there? Eating ice cream cones, Phil. <laughs> Filled with mushrooms. 
<laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, God. Gosh. All right, last one. I've never heard of this. The state native fruit is the pawpaw. Pawpaw. <laughs> pawpaw. pawpaw. It oh. looks like a papaya or a mango. It, I'm sure it's delicious, but which state's official fruit, native fruit? It looks too yeah. like hot for Ohio and Rhode Island, I think. Right? That, I'm like, I'm, I'm like narrowing down, like Louisiana, Tennessee, Texas. Like this feels like a tropical climate fruit. What'd you say, Simone? I'm voting Louisiana. Okay. Because it seems really like tropical, like hot weather. Definitely. I'll say Tennessee. I don't know. I guess I'll say Texas. Let's divide and conquer. If Texas. one of us wins, all of us wins. Ohio. Country. Don't let it be the Ohio. I'll which, which, <laughs> oh wait, wait. Final answer. Simone said Louisiana. Phil said Texas. I said Tennessee. Okay. Sorry, y'all. It was Ohio? Phoebe. <laughs> Vicky? Who are you getting these from? I'm going to look this up. <laughs> Awesome. Like, I'm Ohio? Yes, I swear, <laughs> according to the Lords of Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up after this game. I'm definitely looking at it. <laughs> You're getting some fact checkers in this game. I am not convinced. I got everything wrong. <laughs> you you did, but it's okay because your round is coming up next. Um, but that is eight <laughs> points to my teams. I will not give myself points. And then two points to Simone's teams. All right, so if we pick Team Phil, that was a bad choice, as it's been every episode all season. So we learned there are patterns in life, math, and science. Never be on my side. I'm not good at this game at all. Mm -hmm. All right, but as Phoebe said, we're going to go ahead and move in, um, get ready to move into our next round of trivia, um, which one of our guests, Camille, put together. And we're super Ooh. excited about that. So Camille's going to lead us through this round um, oh, called man. Bring It Up. So before we dive into the round, do you want to give everyone a little context about what they can expect from the cocktail snob for her round of trivia tonight? Sure. So if you couldn't tell, I know nothing about beer or food. <laughs> I only know things about cocktails. So these are um, some fun trivia questions that I usually um, share during like my mixology workshops to kind of like pass the time as people are sipping and they stump people every day. So. We'll see how y'all do. Ooh, I love it. All right, so are we good to move into our first question, Phoebe? We are. All right, so Camille, take it away. All right, um, so our first question, uh, what is the most popular spirit in the US? And we have some, some multiple choice options here. So I don't know, maybe think back to your college days if that will help you. <laughs> Camille, feel free to read them out if you'd like. Oh, okay, sure. So there's tequila, vodka, rum, or whiskey. So the timer is going. Tell me what you think the most popular spirit in the country is. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm there. Don't forget to submit. All right. Oh, I should probably put um, the timer now. I won't. I won't participate. <laughs> um, does anyone have any guesses as to what they think it might be? My guess is whiskey. Whiskey? Yeah, I would guess that. I said tequila, but that's just thinking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> what you like, Simone. We said the pop most popular is, country. I know. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. Well, it's funny because Simone's um, undergrad group was spirits, right? Yes. So what was the spirit's favorite spirit? <laughs> Um, we drank, I think we actually drank a lot of vodka at the time, which like I'm not touching anymore. <laughs> oh, we drank a lot of vodka and randomly we drank a lot of gin buckets, like gin, gin, mixed gin. <laughs> which again, um, something I'm like not really drinking at all anymore. Well, vodka is the answer. <laughs> Buck is the answer. Damn, that's why you said think back to college. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was trying to help everyone out. Oh, wow. Damn. No, no. At, at, when I was in college, they, everyone drank too much whiskey, but that explains my aversion to that now. <laughs> oh. Okay, I got you, Phil. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so all the celebrities listed here have their own brand of tequila, except for one of them. So who is that person? Is it Snoop Dogg, Diddy, Kendall Jenner, or The Rock? So everyone here has their own brand of tequila, except one person. <laughs> it's a tricky one, but I love this question so much. I love it too because I feel like it's the answer is unexpected. I know this one because I've tried them. <laughs> I know. Oh, Phil, you're experienced. <laughs> well, like Simone, I do have a soft spot for tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Simone, since you are the tequila lover, what did you think? I picked Snoop Dogg. Mm. I feel like yeah. I I said I feel like I've heard the other three. Yeah, that that is correct. It's Snoop celebrity Dogg. tequila is so hot right now. Yeah. <laughs> Most people think it's Diddy because Diddy spends so much time and money talking about Ciroc, but nobody knows about De Leon. Mm -hmm. You're smart. You know, you got it. <laughs> okay, um, another tricky one. Happy hour is illegal in all of these states except for one of them. Is it Mississippi, Massachusetts, Alaska, or North Carolina? I will not live in an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Oh, timer's going. So Mississippi, Massachusetts, Alaska. I feel like this kind of continues the theme of the state thing that we were just doing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good. It kind of does. It definitely right? does. This is surprising. I I just know the answer, so it's it's easier for me. To <laughs> um, Phil, what do you think? I okay, so I think happy hour is illegal in all of these states except for Alaska. I feel like they need it, right? <laughs> that's a good, that's a really good logic that you have there. Yeah. Um hold on. I'm gonna unlock the question again. I don't think that many people answered, so I'm gonna try that again. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So if, if you didn't answer Go ahead and answer. If you did answer and want to change, feel free to. <laughs> maybe, maybe go with Phil's guess. Maybe no. Maybe it was terrible. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe. <laughs> no, literally in Alaska, all they have to do is drink. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's like dark all the time for most yeah. of the time. All right. Um, yeah. Neil. So it's actually Mississippi. Hmm. Yeah. I feel it was illegal in Massachusetts. Yes, I learned this the hard way. I will tell you that story later. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that the hard way. So that is all the context I need. Let's keep moving. I will never move there. That's all. <laughs> okay. Um, the word vodka is derived from a Slavic word that translates to what? Is it liquor, spirit, water, or life? Liquor, spirit, water, or life. What does vodka mean in the Slavic language? Let the Texas spirits speak to you, Simone. <laughs> oh. We're getting, we're getting a little. I feel like we're getting a little cheers moment here from. Um, yeah, that's my, that's, uh, <laughs> my sister and her boyfriend. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All Cheers. Right. Yeah. Nice. All right. So the answer is water. Really? I Wait, chose life. life. <laughs> so like, you know, the doctor says, drink a lot of water. Vodka is life. Yeah. Vodka is water. <laughs> water. You didn't say what language to drink it in, so. <laughs> It translates to water, so drink all Not water. what language to drink it in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the doctor said. Okay. Um, in what spirit bottle might you find a worm? Is Oh, there's no multiple choice. Never mind. <laughs> there's a worm in the bottle. If you've ever been to Mexico, you probably have seen this. They might have made you take a shot of this. Yes. Maybe. I feel like this was a missed opportunity, Phoebe. Why? <laughs> yeah. Mexico, we didn't do this. Oh, yeah. Now I'm questioning. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think, Simone? 
Well, let's see. Well, I felt I said tequila, but I feel like now that was too basic. Maybe it was mezcal. Yeah, yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn. Okay. okay. Most people don't don't know that. I didn't until a month ago. So. And zero percent of our people. The scorpion did. that's in the tequila. Oh, is that right? Yeah. There's like some of the, I think some bottles of Mexican tequila have like a scorpion in there or some sort of bug. Mm -mm. Between the poop and, and the poop, I can't. <laughs> I just, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on today. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot in the drinks. Uh, okay. Which of the following liquor brands is not a brand of gin? <clears throat> is it Empress, Tandwai, Aviation, or Tanqueray? So one of these is not a brand of gin. Um, <laughs> Bill, you sound concerned. I actually know more than I thought I did. Well, I was I was looking at the options and I was like, all of these are brand of gin. And then you said the question was, which is not. And I said, clearly these are not all brands of gin. <laughs> so. Yep, that, that would be right. I'm gonna evaluate some life choices for a second. Which one did you think? Okay, well, so I know Empress is a pretty purple one. And then um, Aviation is Ryan Reynolds' brand. Yeah. But the two T ones, I don't remember which one is actually the gym. <laughs> I love that. Phoebe, do you know all the answers already, right? I do, yeah. All right. So the answer is Tandui. That is the one that is not a gin. It's a, that is actually a Filipino rum. Oh. Yeah, Tandui. Tanqueray is a really popular gin, though. It comes like in that green bottle. Oh, yeah. Okay. So oh, here's the, I never know the right way to pronounce it. So you said Tanqueray and there was Tandue. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It was a trick. Whoops. Be tricky. Uh -huh. um, okay. According to Drinks International, what is the most popular cocktail in the world? Is yeah. it the old fashioned, the whiskey sour, the martini, or the daiquiri? Which is I'll take one of each, please. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Maybe that's why I'm losing because I've had too much daiquiri. <laughs> I don't think that's possible. Oh, you're right. I'm winning because I've had too much. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, Bill. What am I saying? Uh, the limit does not exist. Katie Heron's Mean Girls, directed by Tina Fey. Thank you. Cheers to that. <laughs> Um, any guesses from from the hosts of the guests? I, I know the answer. It's one of my favorite drinks. Oh, oh. I said old oh. fashioned. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yay. All right. It's a strong one, but it's the most popular. It's so yummy. Great. It's a great one. It's a classic. Very good right. question. All right. Um, can you name the ingredients that make up the original margarita? Uh, sorry, I think we changed this question a little bit. Um, so, sorry, my bad. So the ingredients for the original margarita are lime juice, tequila, and what orange flavored triple sec liqueur? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Hi, That's a good way to ask it, I like that. <laughs> um, so again, original margarita ingredients are lime juice, mm -hmm. tequila, and what orange flavored triple sec liqueur? liqueur. I, I have to say that that way every time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, baby. <laughs> oh. We'll see. I just got on this vibe during the pandemic. <laughs> if you are putting the other ingredients, um, I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Uh, let me unlock that question one more time because only three people answered. Yeah, no problem. And then what we'll do too as well because treat your team over here, we'll do a little bit of that, we'll do a little bit of this, we'll do a little bit of that, but then we do a little bit of a moment of that, then we do a little bit of so that. So if anyone wants to answer again, yeah. there we go. Thank you, Phil. Dream team. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Now, hopefully, you all re-answer, play the game again, try it. 
questions. Thank you. <laughs> Spelling just is encouraged, but is not required. Yeah, it's a hard one to spell for sure. All right. So one of the great answers, which isn't wrong, or is wrong, is not Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell us what it is, Camille? Yeah. So it's actually Quantro. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. It's very tasty and expensive. But I was going to say, yeah, those bottles are expensive. I didn't realize margaritas were out there originally costing so much. That's a bougie thing. <laughs> originally, that's like their claim to fame. They love talking about how they're like the original margarita. So. Oh, okay. Well, good for them. Good for them. Uh, all right. Well, then, so that takes us to the end of this round. Camille, do you want to tell us what the rankings are looking like right now? Sure. Um, so it looks like in, well, I'm kind of in last place, but it <laughs> looks like our top three, we have Nelson and his gang in third place with 15 points. Um, in second place with 17 points, there is We Love Phoebe. Amen. I also love her. And then first place with 18 points is Hungry Boy. Boy, I love that. All right. So we know where our standings are right now, but before we move into our final round and our last chance for redemption in the battle for first place, we're gonna take a minute, a minute to talk to Camille. So Simone, we'll see you back here in just a second. Hello. Hi. How are you? I am so excited. I am losing, but I am having such a great time. And I'm so happy. So I'm glad. You could say you're winning in spirit. I am. Oh, oh, I think I think collectively that earned a cheers. Cheers, yes, cheers. Is, I I only had orange juice at home, so that's why I put it in a cup you can't see. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Camille, you are the founder, head honcho, the mastermind behind the wonderful blog and Instagram profile, the Cocktail Snob. Yeah. And so, can you tell us a little bit about what is the Cocktail Snob? Yeah, the um, so the Cocktail Snob is my blog Instagram project that I started about two and a half years ago. Um, initially, I started it because I wanted to write a little bit more. I wanted to go back to school. And then I also realized that people think you need a lot of like fancy ingredients and expensive stuff to make really good cocktails at home. And really, that's not the case. So with my blog, I just try to help people create their own happy hour at home, just showing you how you can use things that you already have in your fridge, already have in your pantry to like make really good stuff. So that's that. Yes, I love it. That's super, that's like super convenient because I know for me, I'm definitely the type of person when people come over, you like wanna, you wanna like do something kind of cute and Ooh, look fancy, but is it? Yeah. yeah. So I, you mentioned earlier that you also have been doing like mixology classes. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, actually the mixology classes started at work. Um, <laughs> Phil, you were a part of this. So when we first oh, started the pandemic hit and everyone was working remotely, we were used to seeing each other and, and really collaborating a lot on our team at work. Um, and we were trying to think of different ways to kind of keep our team connected um, and like raise spirits, raise spirits. Wow. Didn't even mean to do that. Um, <laughs> and someone reached out and just said, Hey, like we know about your blog. Would you be interested in leading us in some like cocktail workshops to kind of just, you know, take the edge off and give people something fun to do like after work. So I started doing it for the work team. And then like literally through word of mouth, people got wind that I was doing this and it's just, spread like wildfire and like probably two or three times a week I host mixology workshops on Zoom. Um, so I, it's like an hour long, I do three cocktails and um, it's a lot of fun. I do a little bit of trivia as well, inspired by the two of you. Uh, it's just really fun to kind of like talk to people who are not my boyfriend because I see him all day, every day. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, bring a little joy through, through alcohol and cocktails. So it's really, really fun. Camille, has, has there been a cocktail that changed your life that like got you into, oh, okay, cocktails aren't hard or pretentious or whatever? Yes, actually the daiquiri is the one. <laughs> so like, this is crazy, but when I was in college, I did not drink. I thought alcohol was like, 
the most disgusting thing. I was like, I don't get it. Why do people drink this? As you can see, I have not caught up with the beer thing yet. Um, but I realized it's because we weren't having like good drinks. It was like, you know, the nasty college bar stuff. But when I had like a classic daiquiri, which is just like rum, lime and sugar, I was like, oh, I kind of like get it now because it, it had like fresh ingredients in it. So that was the one for me that like really changed my perspective on like, oh, alcohol actually tastes good when you mix it with like the right stuff. So <laughs> emphasis on the right stuff to um, anyone out there in college, maybe go for the fresh limes, not the lime juice next time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so as you've been working on the, the cocktail snob, I'm sure you've been making all kinds of cocktails and trying fun creations. Um, summer is basically here and it's just around the corner. For everyone watching at home who wants maybe something like refreshing and delicious this summer, what are some of your favorite go-to cocktail moments? Yeah, so one drink that I actually made recently was um, what some people are calling Fronyak. I don't know how I feel about the name, um, but it's basically a frozen drink that has cognac, mango juice, ginger syrup, and lemon juice in it. So it's like you just throw those ingredients in your blender with some ice, and it like makes this nice like slushy moment that you can just kind of like sip on while you cool down. So that we've got to work on the name. Like the Froniac is not really doing it for me, but it's, it's really good. It's great for the summer. It does sound kind of good. I think I, I'd be willing to try it. Why not? Yeah. It tastes amazing. <laughs> so I know that in addition to you doing mixology and giving people cocktail recipes, Another part of the cocktail snob is that you're also giving people good tips and advice on hosting and having, you know, a, a good time uh, during when we're able to be around each other. So I'd yeah. love to know, like, what are some of your essential tips for people if you're going to be hosting folks and you want to have, you know, a couple of drinks and just make sure that the vibe is immaculate? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think one thing that I always advise is just do as much as you can in advance. Because like, how annoying is it to have to like prep things and mix things while your friends are around and then you can't enjoy any of the fun, you're missing out on all the inside jokes. So as much as you can try to prep stuff, like you can even make a lot of cocktails ahead of time, just like bash them and just have them ready to just add ice to it later on. Um, so I think that would probably be my number one tip. Um, another tip I would recommend is like, let people make their own stuff. Like you don't, if you don't want to do all that batching work, let people make their own stuff, but you don't necessarily have to like buy all of the alcohol. Cause I feel like people want to like buy everything cause they try to please everyone. No, people will drink what you have, <laughs> Trust me, I've seen it. Um, so buy what you like first and then, you know, people buy like mixers and, and different things like that to go along with whatever spirit you like and people will adjust. They will be absolutely fine. I don't care if they said they don't like rum, they will drink it if it's there because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> so don't try to please everyone, but you know, buy what you like. Essential tips for your life, definitely. <laughs> um, real quick, I know you're not just limited to your blog and your Instagram anymore. Do you have any news that you want to share? I know you shared it a few months ago, but all the yeah. matches. Yeah, it's like not real yet, but um to me. Uh, I am actually writing a book. So girls <laughs> yeah. published author next year. So I'm writing a book. It's called Free Spirit Cocktails. It will be in stores on in November of 2022. So not this fall, but next fall. So I actually have already written the entire thing. There's just a lot of back and forth that happens between myself and the publisher. And then they're gonna like show me all the covers and we're gonna like go through the photography. Um, so the book comes out next year and I'm super excited. So it's alcohol free, but you can add alcohol. <laughs> I love that. That's absolutely amazing. That's so that's so exciting that you have um, a book coming out that you've had so much success with your blog and also with your Instagram. I mean, the food and wine mention is something that I love. Anytime I'm around, just kind of pulling out and being like, remember that time you were in Food and Wine magazine for being amazing and doing what you're doing there? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so I, I would love to know, like, you know, you have the book coming, you're taking over the blogging world. What is next for the cocktail snob? Where are you hoping to go? <sighs> That's a great question. And I feel like I don't even know. I think I want to continue to like work on my photography skills because that's something that um, I've been able to do, especially during the pandemic, just having a little bit more time. So I definitely want to hone those skills a little bit more. Phil, I feel like you're such a great photographer. I don't know what I'm doing. I just like <laughs> I'm learning as I go, I guess. I don't know. Um, and I definitely um, want to just like work with some more brands and, and like really, you know, get out there and, you know, I don't know. I just I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I don't I have no plan. I feel like that's worked with worked for me so far. So <laughs> kind of continue on that road, to be honest with you. Honestly, words of wisdom. Live in the moment, everyone. Just keep that's doing nice. what brings you joy. Yeah, truly. Um, so before we jump into our final round, Camille, do you want to tell everyone where they can follow you and learn a little bit more about the cocktail snob? Yes, of course. So my website is cocktailsnobnyc.com. There's a ton of recipes, home entertaining tips there, but I do spend most of my time on Instagram, on the feed, in the stories. So you can follow me on Instagram at the cocktail snob underscore. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Camille, for being here. We're so happy to have you here playing Feeling Smart. So uh, Phoebe, I think it's time for us to bring back Simone and it's time for us to go into our final round. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So I it. will let you take it away. Yeah. So I feel like not enough people know this. But Brad Pitt eats and drinks in every single movie, literally every single movie he's in. Um, so these are just eight gifts of Brad Pitt eating and drinking, and you have to guess the movie. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. basically it. Um, each question is worth two points, but it's just one answer, name the movie. So let's go with it, right? Okay. Question one, what is this movie? Why does it say that? Why does it say what? Uh, the question. Oh, the question's wrong. Don't worry about the question. Um, on on Q and A, just name the movie. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry about that, everyone. What movie is this from? I'll start the clock. Um, so if you can think back to Brad Pitt's IMDb, don't you dare pull it up, but what movie is this from where he's eating Lay's potato chips? I, am, I don't know movies either. It's pretty tough for me. I'm not a movie person. <laughs> oh no! Oh no. Let's see. Let's find well, out. I, I, feel like, I feel like Brad Pitt's a pretty well-known actor. I feel like you guys might recognize one or two. I certainly, <laughs> yeah, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> As long as it's not super niche, we'll find out. I would say only one is super niche. Okay. Uh, but it's not this one. Anyone? No. I do. What in the club. box? I What's in the, the box? box? Open the box! No, okay. That yeah. was awkward. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven. It's the movie Seven. I <laughs> close. Never even oh, that, was, that was literally like one of those moments where you're speaking a different language and people are just like, I don't understand. That's fine. It's okay, guys. Uh, great movie if you want to watch it sometime. Uh, let's go to question two. Name this movie. Mm. He's having dinner. He's with a bunch <laughs> Okay. Where's the multiple choice? <laughs> I'm just going to have, hopefully, Gage will hold it down for the Nelson teams. <laughs> I, mm -mm. I have no idea. Wow, the, okay, all right, this might be a tough one then. <laughs> well, this is the one where I'm like, why do you do his hair like that? But this is the movie that supposedly broke up his marriage to Jennifer Aniston. I got it. Did I get it right, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Come on, I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. This is also a ch hair choice, but it was in, like 97, so. Oh. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I don't actually know a lot of young Brad Pitt movies. I kind of knew him once he started getting older and doing more things. Mm -mm, no idea. I don't, I don't know this one. Mm 
<laughs> well, one answer is nope. <laughs> <laughs> At least they were honest. I, I appreciate the honesty there. They just said nah. Okay. In addition to eating and drinking in all his movies, he also kind of mimics his real life girlfriends or spouses. Um, like he kind of looks like them at this time. He was dating Gwyneth Paltrow with the blonde. So oh, um, the answer is meet Joe Black. Mm. Never, never heard Don't of him. Never I think he's like the devil incarnate. Like he, he becomes a real person. He like doesn't know what to do. So he's like eating a spoon full of ice cream there. So he's like, wow, this is good. Humans got it right here. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. All right. Question number four. See if people know this. Oh, I actually just oh, watched this movie a few weeks ago. I mm, this is wrong, but I'm gonna write it. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but <laughs> <laughs> this is also a great gift. I love that he's just like, oh no, not no, no, not that spot, not like, that one. No. Hmm. I don't even know. Who Super known for this movie. Yeah, for sure. Yes? Yeah. All right, I'll start the timer. I think a guy from my high school was in this movie. Wait, really? If I got it right, let's see. Oh, cool. Probably one person got it right so far. All right. Tom Cruise is also in it. Oh, Here's oh. Done. got it. <laughs> Why'd you watch it recently, Phil? Um, because I really wanted to watch this movie. <laughs> it's a, it's actually still a good movie. Um, so I recommend people go check it out. I do. It's fun. What did you watch it on? Um, I think it was on Hulu. Oh. Okay. Well, it was Interview with a Vampire. Oh, no. I definitely didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. I said Mom's got a date with a vampire. <laughs> oh, you had the right line of thinking. But I was like in the same thought process. <laughs> <laughs> Next is that a movie? <laughs> this is another one in that era where he buzzed his head. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Lot definitely not right, but I will write it. Honestly, Lots of famous people in this one. Lots of famous people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right, we got this. We got this. Don't forget to hit submit, everyone, as the timer is starting to run out. He really do be eaten in all his movies. He really does. Um, I unlocked it again in case you didn't um, type or submit. So let me give you one more chance. I feel like there should be a movie where Brad Pitt is a chef, so that way he has a reason to be eating. <laughs> right? You know? Yeah. So, All right. What do What do we think this is, y'all? Inglorious Bastards, but I I don't know. Inglorious Bastards. Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven. There are a lot of famous people in that movie. <laughs> as, well, as well. Okay. How about the next one? <laughs> what is he eating? Oh, I think it's a bagel. Oh, a bagel. Oh, okay. Okay. I love that. Question: While the time is running out, do you guys eat your bagel as like a sandwich or as two separate halves? Mm. I a sandwich? No. Two separate. Yeah, yeah. two separate. Well, my boyfriend <laughs> yeah, totally. eats it as a sandwich. My boyfriend eats it as a sandwich. It's not a sandwich. <laughs> I agree. It's two pieces that need to be enjoyed. Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's what I do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's what I'm just most curious what you guys do. <laughs> Depends to me if it's a cream cheese or like a bacon, egg, and cheese, right? Like, yeah, that's no, just I, cheese. Good. Then I it separate. Yeah. What about when you get like a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel? Oh, for sure. That's that sandwich mode. No, I, I like to put the cream cheese in the middle and just. Oops. No, too much cream cheese. No, it's like toast. You got to eat it like toast. Yeah. Well, Simone, here's your movie. 
I put it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got it this time. All right. Two more going here. This is the uh, little obscure one. Oh. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> See, I would have thought the, the one from earlier would have been the little obscure one. Meet Joe Black? Yeah. This one I, I, I recognize because of the, the costume. Mm -hmm. Or do you? What'd you say? Or do you? Well, now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like I do, because I feel like there's also a gif of him where he does like a little dance in that shirt. Yes, yes. Okay, then I do know the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. We got this. I have faith in everyone. Believe in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's my light to being encouraging and supportive. <laughs> I so appreciate the person who is putting Fight Club for every single one. Wow, that's powerful. Something will stick. I didn't even think about that. Um, so this one is Burn After Reading. Nope. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Silence. Silence. <laughs> All right, last one. I wish this gift were longer. He just goes hey, ham on that Twinkie. Wow. I really don't know any of them. Oh! Okay. <laughs> I definitely cheated and had to look at the background, but I know which one it is. Oh, oh, oh. Um. Seven seconds. This movie. Mm -hmm. Is that? Say what I think. I'm sure I look crazy on camera right now, trying to zoom in on this gif. Um, <laughs> okay. I think that says what I think it says. Let me unlock it real quick and give everyone like another second in case you didn't um, submit. What is this movie that Brad Pitt just, he devours that Twinkie in like two seconds. <laughs> I love it. I love how obsessed you are with him going ham on the Twinkie. <laughs> All right, Phil, what do you think it is? All right, so that says All-Star Game Baseball, so I'm gonna go with Moneyball. You are on, yeah. the, money, on the Moneyball. It is Moneyball. Yeah, I was surprised. I was my club for a few, so I was one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a fair guess, absolutely. Well, that's the game, y'all. Uh, let's see how everyone did. Wow. Terrible. Game. <laughs> um, thank you for playing, Dakota Jones. Your time is coming next week. Uh, you're tied for six or seventh point place with six points with your quizzer, Harry. Um, somehow I got sixth place with nine points, uh, fifth place with 11 points, but stealing part. <laughs> Fourth place is our very own Jess Nelson's mom, Simone. Uh, third place, 19 points. We love Phoebe. Second place, 24 points, Hungry Boy. And one point lead, first place, Peeked it out there, Nelson and his gang. Hey. Nelson, hey. Hey. Hold it down for Team Simone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, Gage. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Go ahead. No, okay. Thank you so much, Simone and Camille. We really appreciate you both being here and playing Feeling Smart with us. It was super duper fun. Um, one last time, starting with Camille, do you want to tell everyone where they can find you and how to connect? Yeah, so if you're looking for recipes, head to my website. It's cocktailsnobnyc.com. But I honestly spend most of my time on Instagram, so you can follow me there at the cocktail snob underscore. Great. And Simone? Awesome. Um, best place to follow me and Gage and Nelson is on Instagram at non sequitur beer. And check us out when our taproom opens, probably in the next month in Bushwick. That's exciting. I will make the trip. Let's go to Bushwick, everyone, for the opening. Yeah, All right. thank you guys again so much. It's just awesome not only to have you both as guests and just really doing cool things. I was telling my coworker, like, oh, these are my guests. And she's like, are you the boring one in the group? You have such <laughs> friends. Um, 
it's also great just to have two badass women in the industry just doing their thing. So I really love and respect that and love you both. Um, but thank you so much. And thank you everyone that was here today. If you want to leave a tip or any of that, it's also on the page Q&A.thetrivialist. You can see the Venmo and credit card links right there. But we really appreciate it. Phil, do you want to quickly mention who next week is? Yes. So next week, everyone, we are so excited because we're going to be joined by New York City soul rock band Dakota Jones. They have a new album and a show at the Bowery Electric coming up. So we're going to hang out with them, hear about their new music, and let you guys get to know them as well. So thank you all so much for being here. And we'll see you next Thursday at 8 o'clock to find out who's feeling smart. Yes. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, y'all. Bye, everyone. Bye.